Good afternoon, JiraniCon. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody is having a great time and that you are patronizing these awesome local artists and our vendors and that everyone is taking a look at the Star Wars The Last Jedi art. Um, just along the back wall, there are a lot of original pieces for sale, so make sure that you check those out. If you have any interest in buying any of them, please talk to a staff member and we'll try to get you in contact with the artist so we can do that. So thank you for being here again and welcome to our three o'clock panel. And today we have DJ Tony Drake, who's right here, give him a round of applause. And he's gonna talk to us today about starting your own animated series, but also how to kickstart and raise money for a project like that. So he's got an awesome presentation planned for us. So if you'd like, gather around and he's gonna tell us about that. So really quickly about Tony. Tony is a professional self-taught DJ. He's the owner of Blue Geek Music and creator of the upcoming animated series, The Indies, an animated series. In October of this year, Tony raised over $50,000, I believe just in the month of October. Yeah, on Kickstarter. Um, and it's for an animated short revolving around the series. Whether it be through animation or music, Tony's goal is to tell dope stories through art. So welcome, Tony. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Hey, everybody. Um, like Carmen said, I'm DJ Tony Drake. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the indies as well as um, starting a Kickstarter. Um, by show of hands, has anybody um, either done a Kickstarter or wanted to do a Kickstarter? All right, a couple. Okay, all right, cool deal, cool deal. I'd like to do one for myself. All right, <laughs> all right you can go ahead and go on to the next slide. Um, so a little bit of background about the Indies. Um, it's an animated short. It takes place in a post-apocalyptic future, uh, but there's still hip-hop around. So the main character, Slick, who's up there on the right, uh, more than anything, wants to be the universe's next biggest hip-hop star, and he's willing to do anything to make that happen. So one day, he winds up meeting a DJ who says, if you sign this contract, I can make all your dreams come true. So of course, Slick doesn't read the contract, signs it anyway. Come to find out, he actually signed up to be a hitman for hire. So now he has to navigate being a hitman and releasing a debut album all at the same time. Um, so one of the unique things about my story is that there's actually a soundtrack, uh, all original soundtrack that goes along with it. Um, and we recorded that in a Grammy award winning studio, um, actually out in uh, DC. Um, so. In order to do all this, um, like I came up with the idea, did a lot of research, but had to try to come up with a, a, a way to fund it um, because animation is super expensive. And that's kind of how I, why I turned to, to Kickstarter in order to do this. Um, so you can flip on to the, the next one. And this is actually some of the, a little bit of more art um, from the series. You can go on to the next one. Um, but it kind of starts as, like, why, why did I go with Kickstarter? Um, there's a, a, a ton of different uh, crowdfunding resources that you could use as far as Indiegogo, um, asking people for money. But the reason I chose Kickstarter was because there's a, there's a bit of gravity to it. Um, you have to collect all your money or you have to raise all your money or you don't get any of it at all. Um, so if you're trying to raise $50,000, if you get $49,999 and the time goes out, you don't get anything. Um, so that's kind of uh, an incentive for people to, to want to donate. I don't think a lot of people knew that, actually. Right, right, right. And, and that's actually a, another piece of that's kind of tough about Kickstarter is that not a lot of people know exactly how Kickstarter works. Um, so one of the big things that you, that you have to do is actually educate your audience about uh, what Kickstarter is. Um, because there's a lot of times um, like the, uh, like the big rule that no one knows about is that if you donate on Kickstarter, you don't get charged right away. Um, you actually have to meet your goal before anyone's credit card is charged. So I would go up to people and I would say like, hey, like if, if, if you wanna help, if you wanna see the indies on television, I just need a dollar. And then people will say, well, I don't get paid until the 15th. And it's just like, well, like if you'll have a, a dollar by the 15th, like you'll be, you'll be good. Um, so that's, that's a, a, a hurdle, an obstacle in, in trying, to get, um, trying to get over that. And I guess I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that later on in the presentation. Um, 
one of the things that you want to do is you want to begin early. If you're, if you're trying to do a Kickstarter, you want to start maybe like three months ahead of time actually doing promo and gener generating interest um, so that when your Kickstarter starts, when people Google you, there's actually stuff there. Um, it's not just the Kickstarter. Um, because a lot of what you're doing is you're trying to prove to people that, like, yo, this is really dope, this is an actual thing. And if all that they're seeing when they Google it is the Kickstarter, it's kind of like, well, what, like, what is this? Um, and the other big thing, like the huge thing, is that Kickstarter is like a full-time job. Um, it, is, it is unbelievably time-consuming, the research that goes into it, um, when you're responding to people. Um, so you just, need to, you just need to be prepared for that. Um, and, and make sure that you're, that you're doing something where you have a block of time that you can actually devote, devote to it. Um, you can go on to the, to the next one. Um, so like I said, the big thing is like doing the research. Um, and you want to do the research to set your funding goal so that you know exactly how much that you need. Um, because if, if you set your goal at 50,000, um, but you really only need 10,000 to do it, yes, it'd be nice to have 50,000, but it's that much harder. Um, the other thing is that you want to be honest with the people that are, that are donating, that are supporting and backing you. Um, because you don't want to say like, all right, if you give me $50,000, I'll, I'll make this cartoon. And then come to find out it's actually 100,000. Like people just gave up their hard earned money and you're not able to deliver. Um, so that's just a, another reason that you want to do, that you want to do research. Um, you also want to, um, like when you're, when you're coming up with how much, how much do you want to, to raise? Um, you don't have to raise everything. You can say, like if you're doing a comic, um, you could say, I just want to raise enough to do the first run of print. Um, and then that way you don't have to come up with a, a, like an astronomical amount of money. You can kind of break it down and find other ways to, to fund your, your project and reach your goal. Um, and the, the other big thing about trying to, to do this Kickstarter is trying to do the research and figure out how much money you might get. Um, so it might seem weird, but actually going out to friends and family and just asking them, like, are you, like, are you willing to donate? And if you are, like, how much? Just so that you know how much effort that you're going to have to put into it, um, how much uh, resources you're going to have to try to pull. So you can go on to the next one. Um, and that kind of goes into your circle and, uh, and, and Kickstarter. Um, with Kickstarter, if you're raising pretty much any amount of money, um, you're going to have to rely on people outside of your circle. Um, because if you go through and you ask everyone that you know and everyone decides to donate and you're still short, like what do you do at that point? Um, so the thing is trying to convince people to tell other people. That's, that's really how you're going to reach that Kickstarter goal, is the people that not just backed, but told other people to back as well. Um, so you want to make sure that your story is clear to them so that they can go through and they can share that with other people as well and convince them to become backers. Um, what else? Uh, the, <laughs> the other big thing, too, um, I kind of had to learn this the hard way, uh, but luckily I learned it early, is that like I wanted like I did the Kickstarter and so like you would ask a friend like, yo, like, like tweet it out or put it on Instagram. Um, but the thing is, is that no one knows your story as well as you do. Um, and so it makes it tough for them to write a post about it because it's like, well, I don't want to mess it up. So one of the key things that you can do is just write the post for them and say like, hey, I want your support. All you got to do is copy and paste it. Um, the other thing is that to have someone think of something like even though it's only 140 characters, like, it's a lot. Um, so just trying to make things easy for people to, uh, to, to, to support you. And that's kind of a common thread throughout the whole Kickstarter process. It's trying to make things as easy as possible. Um, trying to make things just like I just click once, I just go one place, and everything's kind of, kind of there. Um, go on to the next one. Um, so the other thing is, is marketing. Um, trying to determine, like, do I need to go out and spend the extra money to hire a PR team um, to actually help me out so I can reach my goal? Um, I don't think that's something that I can answer. It's kind of, like, individual. But the things that I would say if you are going to hire someone is um, 
tr actually try to hire more than one marketing team um, because they're going to be able to reach out to different crowds. Um, the other thing is too is make sure that they're actually giving you the analytics and that you can track how effective like that marketing team is to make sure that you're getting um, that you're getting your money's worth and also so that you can kind of um, direct them to shift what it is that what it is that you're that you're that you're doing. So maybe you're posting on Facebook that's not hitting. So let's take out the money that we're putting on Facebook ads and we're going to try to put that money in, in Instagram in, in, instead. Um, uh, the big thing too is knowing the audience. Um, one of the one of the things if you're if you're an artist, um, at least for me, I try to do the story and make the art for myself and my friends. Um, so that so in doing that, like I know who the audience is. Like I know what websites I'm visiting. Um, I know what I think is cool. Um, I know how I how I digest information. Um, so if you're the same way, like that's 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 a big thing because you know exactly where to where to put these things. Um, the other thing that you want to do is you want to kind of break down your project and see how many different types of audiences that you can put it in front of. Um, so for example, mine with the indies, it's uh, it's dealing with cartoons. So I can go and I can put it in front of cartoons. Um, it has hip hop music in it. So if you're a hip hop fan, I can put it in front of you. Um, there's also, the characters are very diverse, so if there are people that I think are interested in that, I can put it in front of them. Um, and then that way you're not limiting yourself. So that's, that's a, a big thing of not just knowing your audience, but trying to expand your audience and see if you can get people to, to kind of attach and, and feel, um, feel a, part of the, a part of the project. Uh, you can, oh, the other thing too is, although Kickstarter is online, you can't just solely rely on being online and staying behind a computer. Um, the big reason why I was able to reach my goal is because pretty much every day, like I was going to different events. So I was going was talking to, to people. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, I was going to Comic Cons and, and talking to people there. Um, I was going to different hip hop shows and seeing if I could get like three minutes on stage just to, to talk about it. Because I know that those were the type of people that would be interested in something like this. Um, so I would definitely say don't just stand behind a, a computer, actually get out in real life and talk to people. Um, because people can watch a video and try to get it, but when you're actually talking to someone in person, they can actually like feel that energy off of you. So you can go on to the next slide. Um, the Kickstarter video, that's, that's another thing. Um, you want to have it be less than three minutes. Um, and the reason, the, so the Kickstarter video is, is super important um, because that's going to be, that's going to be the thing that people actually watch to, to see if they want to actually become a backer. Um, because you can go through and you can put all the text on the page and be super detailed, but no one's going to read it. Um, you might get one or two people that are really into it that will, but most people are going to watch your video and that's why it's that important. And that's why I say make it only three minutes. Um, because people's attention span only is, is so long. And for people to sit down and, and, and watch it for, for more than three minutes, people aren't going to do it. Um, the other thing, I think I explained it a little bit earlier, is explaining how Kickstarter works. Um, that's something that's super important, um, trying to fit that in there, as well as um, trying to connect to the viewers. One of the things that is the most critical part is making people believe that what you're doing is important and that they want to be a part of it. Um, and the other thing too is also making them see that like this is going to be successful and this is going to go on and, and do bigger and better things. Um, because everybody wants to be a part of a winning team. Everybody wants to um, be able to- I gave to, money to that. Exactly. And look how good it's doing. Exactly. I did that. <laughs> exactly. Like how many times do you tell your friends like, uh, like, you show, like you show them a song and you're just like, yo, like I put you on to that like way before. Like that's the same thing that people want to be able to do with Kickstarter. Um, so just using the Kickstarter video to, to kind of to share that, um, share that message with people. Um, you go on to the next one. Um, and so these are like Kickstarter secrets that may or may not be real, um, but a lot of times they work. Um, so 
one of the things that you want to do with Kickstarter, if you can, is get to the front page of Kickstarter. Um, and because they only have the most popular pages, most popular projects on the front page. Um, the other thing too is that that allows you to get access to like the casual fan of Kickstarter. Um, those are people that you don't have to go out and try to reach. Kickstarter is already bringing those people. So if you can get to the front page, those are like some donations that you can get without having to do anything. But the way to get to the front page and become popular, um, there's like three things that you can do. Um, you can either get like a hundred followers in a day, and then that will be it'll, you'll become a popular project. Um, or if you raise, I believe it's a third. I say a third. Yeah, if you believe a third, raise a third of your funding in the first day. Or if you get to half of your funding in the first three days, then you become a Kickstarter project Does that, that you love. Does that actually happen? Oh yeah, that happens all the time. Oh. Like it happens all the time. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. There's um, there was actually uh, oh, man. I'm blanking now, but there was um, there was a woman who who did a uh, who did a comic, maybe like two months ago, and she raised twenty five thousand dollars in like the first eighteen hours or something like that. So, so it's ridiculous. So it happens all the time. It happens all the time, and that's why you guys want to start early so that you can get people to to focus and and on that first day just try to drive people. Um, to become backers so that you can try to get to that front page. Um, you can go to the next one. Um, and so these are some of the tools that you can actually use. Um, Thunderclap, um, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of it. It's kind of a, a way to try to, to amplify a social media post. So what you do is you have people sign up and they like temporarily give you access to their, um, to like their Twitter account. And so, on the same day, at the same time, it automatically just tweets it out. And so what, what happens is if you can get a lot of people to do it, then as people throw, scroll through their timeline, all of a sudden they're just like, whoa, there's like 100 people that are tweeting about this thing. Like, let me go and check it out. But to actually try to depend on people to, to do that is like super tough. And so that's why this tool allows you to, to automatically do that. Um, another thing is being sure to use like, um, Facebook analytics and Instagram analytics to, to buy ads and try to figure out what's working, what's not working. Um, another really cool tool that not a lot of people know about is this uh, thing called Streak. So what that allows you to do is you send out an email and it actually tells you who opened it and, and when somebody opened it. And you can kind of track like who you sent emails out to, do you have to follow up with them? Um, because if one of the things I don't like to do if I say like, hey, can you help? And I send an email and it's just like, all right, do I wait a day to reply back? Do I wait two weeks? So if you see that like they opened it immediately, then maybe you wait two days to follow up instead of two weeks to follow up. Um, so that's kind of a tool that you can use to make sure that um, people are answering your email. And I think for um, software like that, you can not only see when they first open it, but when you can see when they open up your email again. Exactly. And you can also see if they clicked into something. Exactly. So. Exactly. And the other thing, too, is that you can also, like, it also shows you where they are. Um, so you can, kind, like, if you kind of know who the person is, you can see, like, if they're forwarding it and if it's actually making its way through. Um, so that's, it's a, it's a cool tool. You guys should definitely check that out. Um, and then I just like Google Keep. I really don't have anything to say about that. It's just kind of cool to keep track of stuff, I guess. Um, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think if you want to go on to the next one, that was it. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So. Well, thank you. That was all very informative. There are some things I did not know. I hope there are some things that you all learned as well about starting a Kickstarter. Um, so, going back really quick to, I think there was a slide that had your animations on it. Um, yeah. Can we talk really quickly about there we go um, the actual comic itself or the series itself yeah, 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 and um, what your plans for it are? I mean, I know your Kickstarter is already already over, so the the hard sell is already over. So do you want to tell us, um, you know, what platform you want to premiere this on? You said it's going to be an animated series. Do you, are you going to have a written component? Is it just it's YouTube? Tell us a little bit more about this. Gotcha. So what we did the animated short for was, or what we did the Kickstarter for was the animated short. Um, so this is kind of like serving as our pilot. Um, we've actually been able to go and talk to different networks, different executives, and they've been interested in it. 
um, because we have the music already. We also have toys. Um, we're about to have t-shirts that are launching um, at the beginning of the year. So there's a, a bunch of different things that kind of make this uh, a, a franchise. Um, so we did the Kickstarter. Right now we're actually doing interviews and hiring different animators, uh, storyboard artists, layout artists, um, to go through and actually do the short. Um, and after we do that, then we're going to go through and we're going to do a festival run, hopefully in the fall, um, and just kind of continue to prove that, yes, people want to see this on TV. Um, one of the things that I wound up doing was actually writing the whole first season. So I just need someone to write a check, and then I'll be able to be able to go through and, and have the full-length series. So you're there. looking to have this on television. You, um, what's the... Because a lot of people are going to the web first, because right. obviously that is the easiest place to just put your project. So what is motivating you to make the jump to TV? So it's, and it's not, like I always say TV, um, but the reason I do that is because that's just kind of like the easiest to digest. Um, but like I'm definitely not ruling out like Hulu or Netflix or like a YouTube Red if they came and they said like we're going to put the advertising dollars behind it. Um, I'd, I'd definitely be willing to do that because there are so many different platforms um, that are available to get your content out there. Um, I guess we're just um, just blessed in the fact that we have all these different products that we have that are kind of already done and we're doing it by ourselves that has generated the interest of like a, a, a television network. And so as your bio says you are a DJ and you have Blue Geek Music, what was the inspiration to do this sort of shift from, I mean, you said there's hip hop in it, but what, what made you go, I want to create an animated show? Like, gotcha. what, where, where did that come from? Um, so it actually started, like, this whole project started off as me wanting to do a mixtape. Um, sure, wanted, that makes sense. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> there you go. Um, so, and what I wanted to do with this mixtape is be able to uh, provide a platform for artists that I thought were dope. Um, but the thing is, is that, like, everybody and their cousin has a mixtape. And so I was just like, all right, well, what can I do to make... Literally, I have cousins that have mixtapes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so what can I do to, to make this different? And I was just like, all right, well, I really like the gorillas, but there wasn't, like, a story behind the gorillas. And so I was just like, all right, well, maybe if I can, like, write something, like, maybe I can do something there. Um, and then it actually just, like, it came out, and I'm just like, oh, like, this is, this is actually pretty dope. Like, let me, let me continue with this. Um, so the animation was actually something to try to make the music different, but it just created this whole nother beast. <laughs> and um, you touched on it very briefly. Um, do you want to tell us sort of the plot and the sort of, you know, storyline without giving us any spoilers? We don't like spoilers around here. So. Okay, yeah. Um, well, I guess it's, it's pretty much like I said at the, at the beginning, the story follows uh, Slick who wants to, become, uh, wants to become a rapper, but he winds up getting this like super janky contract um, where he winds up becoming a hitman. And so the story follows this record label as they, um, as they go through and do these different hits, but kind of have to cover it up um, under the disguise of they're just going on tour. Um, so it kind of explores um, morality and like people trying to um, like figure out for themselves like what's right or wrong. Um, like Slick is actually 19 years old, and so for me, that's that's kind of like the time where you step out, like you step out on your own. Like you you may not be under your parents' household anymore, um, and so like your parents could have told you what's right and wrong for 18 years, but once you're out on your own, like you have to make that decision. Um, and so it kind of explores that and like each of the characters coming into their own in their own different ways. So going back to a little bit more about kickstarting, um, aside from the people aspect, you know, I guess the leading a horse to water but not being able to make them drink, what are some of the other obstacles to a successful campaign other than, you know? Okay. Um, some of the other obstacles. Uh, I would say a, a big one is, is the research. Um, going into it and finding out exactly how much money I need to, to, to raise. Um, because 
you can, and I guess the thing too is, like you can, you can have like this super huge idea of what it is that you want to do and like how much money that's going to be. But then you have to like come to terms like, all right, can I actually reach that goal? And if I do like 75% of that, like where can I actually be? But in order to make that assessment, like you have to really know what it is that you're doing. Um, so it's not something that you can just like overnight decide to do. Um, I think another, another thing that, that's probably tough um, about Kickstarter is like I said, just making sure that like people, people understand, people understand it. Um, and getting people to want to go out and tweet it. Um, because it's kind of less like, it's not enough just to get like the $5. Like you want people to get $5 and then like go tell all their friends and family like, yo, like you need to donate to this, like this is really dope. Um, so I think those are probably the biggest, biggest obstacles. What, out of all of the methods that you described, which to actually get people to give money, um, which of those methods do you think are the ones that somebody, you know, you mentioned checking out analytics, you mentioned going around talking to people, you mentioned, um, you know, doing the promoted posts on social media. Which of those, and I left out a lot, um, which of those are something that people cannot do without? You know, if they only choose to do a couple of the techniques that you talked about to make their campaign successful, which of those do you think that you could not have done without? Okay, what were the, what were the choices? Or? Oh, well, you named, you know, you said you have to do analytics. You okay. said you have to do the, pe do the people thing in person. You have to do the promoted posts. You know, you said all those things, you know, help you make the campaign successful. So, you know, if somebody's like, oh, it's too much, I, I, I still want to do a Kickstarter, but, you know, those, I can't do all those things. <laughs> what, it, what would be the one thing that you would say that somebody I mean, would? I mean, to be honest, I feel like you got to do all of them. Okay. Um, I think the thing that you can do is like for the marketing piece. Mm -hmm. Like no matter what, like you're going to need marketing because you have to get it out there. You may not have to pay for marketing though. Um, you may be able to get your friends and try to develop a marketing plan on your own and look into tools to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but the only way that you're going to be able to, to get funding is for people to know about it. Um, so you got to try to push it out as far as possible. Um, and the reason I say that is because even though I raised $50,000, like I barely raised $50,000. <laughs> like I, it was like by the grace of God, I made it. Because what wound up happening is that four days, four days before the Kickstarter ended, I was $20,000 short. And so like I was doing everything to try to to, to figure out like what what it is that I need to what it is that I need to do to get it over the goal because I'm just like man like thirty thousand dollars is a lot and I'm about to lose all of it and so it was that night that I decided like you know what like I did everything that I could do to 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 try to reach my goal like I can't do anything else like I've, I've tried everything and then as soon as I said that all of a sudden my phone started going off and just started buzzing like crazy. What had happened was, have you guys ever seen the movie Holes? Okay, so the dude Zero, um, who was in the movie, actually found out about the Kickstarter. And Cle he started, Cleo Thomas? Yeah, Cleo Thomas, yeah. So he started tweeting about it. And then when he started tweeting about it, Jaleel White started tweeting about it. And when Jaleel White started tweeting about it, then Orlando Jones started tweeting about it. And so, like, it was just, it was just by, I don't want to say luck, but it was the seeds that I had planted at the very beginning. It just took, it took a long time for them to actually sow. So even though you're doing stuff, you just kind of got to like trust in the process. Like I started planning my Kickstarter in November and I didn't launch until like August, August 28th. So there's just a, a lot of time that you have to put into it and just know that the hard work that you put in, you're, you're going to get something out of it. Well, I appreciate you talking to us about this and letting everybody know what you need to do. Um, how can people find you in the meantime? How can people find your work and your art? And just let everybody know, you know, 
what's yeah. next? Yeah, so pretty much everything with the indies and this project is Blue Geek Music. That's on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can go to bluegeekmusic.com and you'll see like all the updates from the show, what we're doing. Like I said, we're just about to start doing the short. Um, you can follow me at DJ Tony Drake too, but there's like really nothing art related. If you want to see pictures of my dog, you can follow me at DJ Tony Drake. Um, but yeah, definitely Blue Geek Music. Well, thank you so much, Tony. We really appreciate you being here today. And everybody, please give Tony, DJ Tony Drake, a round of applause for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.